What started as a rather innocent adventure for Goten, Trunks, Maita and Kondra has started to develop into a more serious direction as the young wannabe heroes have located the mysterious disc containing the blueprints of Cell, something that dropped the mood considerably. Obviously, the first suspicion had fallen toward this mysterious scientist woman they had met before, the other Android 21. I mean, who else could it be, right? Who would do such a thing? From this day forward, the young Saiyan and Bio-men were supposedly meant to report everything weird that they would have witnessed to the proper authorities. In other words, they were working for Bulma. So, when the two Cell Juniors were waiting for the likes of Trunks and Goten to exit their high school for the day, they immediately drilled their friends with questions. So, anything odd? There wasn't anyone following us. Might have looked like she was kind of disappointed by that. Well, there was one thing, but it's probably nothing. Trunks looked a little bit grumpy. Come on, man, tell us. Condra seemed very eager to know. Yeah, you said it yourself that this seems suspicious. Goten tried to encourage his friend to talk about his hunch. Okay, so there's this new guy who's randomly appeared, right? I know, I know, that isn't weird in itself, but his name is Beta. Might have giggled a little bit. <laughs> Beta? <laughs> Seriously? Let's not shame anyone for their name. Goten raised his hands. That's not cool. Sorry. Might have tried to look serious, but still uttered silently. Beta. So, what about him? No offense, buddy, but we can't suspect everyone that you don't like. Condra tried to be more inquisitive. Who said I didn't like him? Trunks looked kind of a surprise by this admission. You're making that face again, Trunks. The son of 21 rolled his eyes. Yeah, it's very noticeable. Mita agreed with her brother. But what? What face? Goten, do you know what on earth these two are talking about? I, I mean, now that they mention it, you do make a certain, well... You know, you kind of look like your mom when you get angry. I am completely calm right now! The son of Vegeta coughed loudly. <clears throat> anyway, we were having a basketball game today and he was really good at it. Like, too good. Okay, so evil guys are good at sports, so what? Contra was confused. No, dummy! He wasn't as good as a regular person's level of being good. He was good like us being good. Like a superhuman. Goten helped out his friend get the point across, and he seemed to be observing me the whole day. Okay, that's more weird, said Maita. Maybe we should follow this beta guy ourselves. Condra then scratched his nose. Cool! I always wanted to be a detective. Yeah, some superheroes are also detectives. Maita clapped her hands. Well, I mean, that does sound kind of badass, but we have to be discreet about it. Also, to deliver the information to Mom and Krillin. Trunks scratched his nose. I mean, they said for us to help, right? Well, we're helping. Mida grinned. Well, if you put it that way... Goten looked around, trying to see if the coast was clear from any fearful parents. Okay, well, where are we going to find this beta guy anyway? Condra looked around. Well, it's too late already, but we can maybe go after him tomorrow, after school. So the plan was simple. The very next day, Goten and the bio androids were supposed to tail Beta when he would leave the school and follow him to see where he lives. They were informed that the young man was trying to provoke Trunks into showing off his powers by provoking him into many situations that would require the half Saiyan to use his two strength in order to make sure that he be rumbled. They had confirmation that this one was up to something. Mm. So, as the classes were over, the group decided to follow, just from different angles, so as not to arouse suspicion. Condra was insisting on using long coats and hats that he created using his clothes beam, like they did in the movies, like magic materialization or something, something that he had learned from Uncle Piccolo. And to their surprise, or lack thereof, Beta started to leave the main outskirts of West City and head towards the mysterious Butterfly Mountain region, which was the main location of certain scary and spooky manners that they were already familiar with. They thought about going inside immediately and having a proper look around for anything devious, but they then figured out that if the scientist lady was inside, together with a copy of Android 16, yeah, that might not have ended well for them. Maybe it was best to hang back. But they did have one confirmation. 
that Beta was indeed connected to this case. And unbeknownst to the three heroes, someone was watching them. A tiny robot resembling a ladybug. So, after they confirmed their suspicions, they met up with Trunks. So, found anything? I swear he was more annoying this time than the last, he asked. I hate to say it, but you're right. Condra shook his head. He went into that mansion, but we saw lights. There were more people there too. Ha! You owe me one of those coats, but more people? Is she building another army? Last time she made all those copies, I think clone Uncle Krillin creeped me out the most. Those empty stairs and all. Maita grimaced. All right, should we like tell anyone about this? We were supposed to report. Goten scratched his nose. Well, yeah, except we don't really know much already, but maybe we could tell Mida and Condra's dad. Just come in and deal with that mess for himself, or... The cogs were turning in Trunks' head. Or... Condra did not like the sound of this. Or we can confront the guy ourselves, capture him and get them to question him. They'll be mighty proud of what we do, and they will treat us seriously from now on. The son of Vegeta slammed his fist on his open hand with a very enthusiastic smile. What if he has a bomb on him? Maida looked slightly worried, aware about the tried and tested Red Ribbon Army tactic. What do you mean? Trunks wasn't expecting that question. I mean, Aunt 18 told me that her uncle 17 and 16 used to have bombs in their chests. What's one small bomb, right? Apparently it was pretty potent, like nuclear level. Condra even was serious about this. He might go boom if we catch him. We'll just take him away from people and call somebody. We won't bring him to my house, that's for sure. Trunks tried to look brave about this. Don't you guys understand? This is our chance to do something that truly matters, to show that we're a part of a team. The others looked at each other very, uh, very puzzled. And it has nothing to do with you trying to impress Mai, said Maita incredulously. N no, Trunks scratched his head. Listen, we're great, all of us. And it's time we should get some respect, Condor looked to his sister. You know, Technically, we can regenerate whenever we want. We never really had an occasion to... Well, I think we can survive a nuke. Contra! Maita scolded her brother. What? He shrugged. You were thinking that too, right? Daughter of 21 took a deep breath. All right, we're in. Hopefully this won't bite us in the bud. Don't worry, we got this. Same NX1 and X2 with Bioman 1 and 2. We're gonna rock this bad guy. And so, they decided to wait another day and capture Beta after school. But unfortunately for Goten, he was already waiting for him during one recess, wearing some sort of superhero outfit and being accompanied by a smaller robot. The son of Goku was kind of surprised by this move, but luckily Trunks had spotted the situation for himself and called for Mita and Condra, and he then changes into his X1 costume. With the three of them, they give Goten enough time to sneak away and get dressed himself. Beta, expecting such a turn of events, reveals that his little sidekick can transform into a battle jacket and start shooting rockets at everybody. The team knows that their duty is mostly to prevent any sort of collateral damage. All right, dude, I think I've had enough of you, X1 then said, transforming into a Super Saiyan, surprising Beta, or Beta 1, as he introduced himself it seems that he wasn't prepared for so much firepower right now, as the boy then shattered his mech without much of an issue. The android then attempted to run for his life, but he then gets quickly surrounded by the three other heroes. All right, I'm not taking no risks with you. Sorry, said Goten, knocking Beta-1 out cold. I didn't even know you could do that with an android. Condra seemed quite surprised by this. You know, he might be more like us than Uncle 16. We should probably call someone. Yeah. Let's talk to Uncle Krillin, said Goten. Meanwhile, at Butterfly Mountain, the mood was not exactly in good spirits, as a certain young scientist was furious about Beta 1's failure. No! Not only did we lose the disc, but now Beta 1 will be in the custody of the cops! Oh, this seems over. It's not over, my sweet boy. He suddenly heard a creepily calm female voice. Who is that? As he turned his head around, he saw a certain red-haired woman. She looked familiar but the scientist could not place a name on her, just like he saw her in an old photo or something long ago. My dear Hedo, I'm just a fan of your work, and I have something for you. A, a fan? For, for me? 
She handed him a data disk, which looked almost the same as the one he had recently lost. Yes, you must hide it well. They will find you and probably catch you. But fear not. I have thought about that as well. C catch her? I don't want to go to jail, lady! The woman giggled. <laughs> no worries. You won't be there for long. Just trust me. Look through the disk and hide it. You will need it later. Why would I trust you? Hedo's eyes narrowed. Because I want to see you become the hero you were always meant to be, my boy. Wait, on your coat? Is that? But she turned away and just exited through the window. As he ran towards her to chase her, she was nowhere to be seen. Wait, was that? No, no, that, that's impossible. Was that a ghost? Hedo turned pale for a second and quickly looked through what the disc contained. It had exactly what the old drive had had, plus some extra stuff. Oh my. All right. This might be useful later. Hedo then sent off his spy bots to secure the actual disc. The woman was right. The police were there, but not alone. Together with an officer, there was... Cell? Huh. I expected someone else. So you're telling me that you're the mastermind behind all of this, pudgy? 21 shook his head. And this is private property! And you have sent some dangerous androids to attack a teenager in the school. That and, uh... Are those zombies? What I... What exactly were you doing in here? Krillin was also kind of shocked by what he saw. I refuse to tell you anything without the presence of my lawyer. Well, you'll have plenty of time for that. Take him away, boys! Outside, they then met up with the Saiyan men and Bio men. So, just a copycat. Wasn't our lady after all? I got to say, he was decent. Had he used that for good, it could be pretty useful. Apparently, all those poor souls that became his androids have families. You think they will be happy to have him back? Condra looked at everyone. Yeah, I think they will, son. I think they will. Anyway, you did good today. Your first proper bad guy and such. Trunks was elated to hear this. Y really? You mean it? Uh, are we on the team now? There is no team, Trunks. If something bad happens, we just intervene. 21 smiled. Well, then we can join in then. Mida clapped her hands. I mean, it depends on the threat levels, but yeah, just Goten and Trunks should talk with their mothers first, just to be sure, but I'll do my best to uh, convince them. Goten sighed. Good luck with mine. You know, I have my way with words. I think they'll understand that her son has a good heart and wants to help. Thanks, 21. Always, friend. Always. In the headquarters of Red Pharmaceuticals, a man with very distinct hair was on the phone, and he truly enjoyed what he had heard. He was looking at his laptop as more and more data was delivered to him. If what she was saying was true, then soon he could present his commander with some really juicy opportunities. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for supporting the case. Oh, that's nothing. And Mr. Carmine? Yes? I see you as a man of culture. I'm sending you some of my own editing software, along with some rather interesting archival clips. I think Commander Magenta might like it. Uh, thank you. Uh, that was very kind of you. Think nothing of it. I just want the torch of the army to still be lit. After the conversation ended, he once again looked through the files of this Hedo. If everything that she said was true, he could just about pull it off. He was in prison currently, but it wasn't a very high security affair, nor was it a long sentence. They could just grab him the moment he exited the gates, but then they would have to do their utmost to try and convince him. Well, this would call for an excellent type of presentation. Yes, Carmine was in his element. He had had to prepare not one, but two pieces of convincing material, one for his beloved boss and the other for this one. Carmine presents, he muttered to himself. A nice ring to it. And that's where we're going to be leaving things right now.